Hello and welcome to another episode of Mean Brews. Today we're covering Hellas Bach, which is a lighter colored Bach than the traditional Dunkel's Bach, and can carry a little bit more hop character. Um, before we get into the data, I uh, just want to remind you that you can pick up a recipe kit uh, for this with and without yeast or with and without or without hops from Bacchus and Barleycorn. Uh, the link will be in the description of this video. Let's get right into the data. I found 33 award-winning Hellas Bach recipes um, dating back pretty far. Uh, there were zero best of show recipes, so this style doesn't seem to take best of show very well. Um, however, there are 19 gold, 3 silver, 9 bronze, and 2 award-winning recipes. Uh, the BJCP style is 4C, a relatively pale, strong, multi german lager beer with a nicely attenuated finish that enhances drinkability. Like I said, the hop character is generally more apparent than in other box, and you'll see some interesting evolution there uh, on the hops. Um, when I look at this, yes, there is quite a bit of evolution going on with this recipe. However, the, the variation is, is pretty minimal uh, between the recipes as they evolve. For original gravity, it ranged between 1.060 and 1.082 with the average of 1.070, which was right just above the BJCP mid, midpoint. Um, that's a pretty tight range for BJCP. Uh, people did well, all, all, all different uh, gravities here. My recipe will be right on the mean. Uh, for IBUs, we had anything between 22 and 36, which was well within the range and almost right in the midpoint. Uh, the average was 29.6, and I'm going to shoot for that. Hasn't been a lot of evolution on IBUs or gravity. Um, color. Um, They've been anywhere from 3 to 10 SRM. Uh, the average is 6.7, and I will be a little bit higher at a little above 7 SRM. Pretty close to it. You know, not really perceivable with the naked eye. Um, we are seeing the color decline over time. A pretty tight correlation here at 0 0.72. Um, tight little data set showing that the style is getting lighter and lighter in color. Uh, look back in the... All the way back to the 2004 BJCP, it was a separate style from Dunkel's Bach. I was curious if they were the same, covered in the same category or subcategory back here, but they were separate. So, um, For the malts, um, the average was about 96.4% base malt, followed by crystal 2.2, toast malts 1.4, and 0.1% adjuncts. Uh, when you look at um, if they use that malt... Um, you know, looking at the base malt, anywhere between 87 and 100% of the grist base malt, um, I will be on the low side, right at about 92% uh, for my recipe. And when we zoom in on these down here, um, crystal, we had about, um, sorry, going getting ahead of myself here, um, anywhere between no crystal and 10%, and anywhere between 1 and about 8.5% um, uh, for toasted malts um, and then one recipe used an adjunct uh, at three percent of the grist um, as you know or may not know a third of the recipes using it is the threshold where i will use it so i will be using a crystal malt right around six percent and i will be using a um, toast malt right at about three percent when you look at the base malts that the these recipes used most common, of course, is this black curve Pilsner, anywhere between 22 to 100% of the grist. Pilsner malt, 100% uh, of the recipes used Pilsner. The average was 65%. Uh, the next most com common was uh, Munich malt, 85% of the recipes. A huge majority of the recipes used Munich with an average of around 27, but all the way up to 47% of the grist was the max. Uh, next most common was Vienna. Um, right at 36% of the recipes used a Vienna malt at an average of 23% of the grist. So I will be using all three. So I'll be right on the low side for all three. Um, probably about 50% Pilsner, 20% uh, Munich, and a little, a little under 20% Vienna. Probably why my color range is so uh, is on the high end of the average. Uh, for crystal malts, um, Carapils was the most prominent. We had around a little over 25% and an average of 6% of the grist. 27% uh, 20, of the recipes used carapils at 6% of the grist. And then we had a few recipes use a light crystal uh, malt. Uh, I will be using carapils right at the average 6%. Toast malts. 
Um, melanoidin, aromatic, or biscuit malt were the three used. These are all in the same family. And uh, melanoidin was used in 21% of the recipes and an average of 3% of the grist. And I will be using right there at the average in my recipe. Pretty busy uh, recipe for a Hellsbach, honestly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, that one recipe that used an adjunct uh, used flaked barley at 3%, and I won't be using uh, flaked malts for this recipe. Uh, we had 13 bittering hops used. Uh, the most prominent were Magnum. 33% of the recipes used Magnum. 18% used Haller Middlefru. 15% per Perla. Uh, Tet, Sots, Northern Brewer, and a slew of others there. Um, I will be using Magnum for my bittering hop. Um, and the reason is, is that is becoming the de facto bittering hop to use for this style. It's a hoppy German beer, so less hop material in the kettle is always better. So, uh, Magnum is the way to go. Flavor hops. There were eight flavor hops used. Herzbrucker, Tet, uh, Haller Middlefru, uh, almost three quarters of the recipes use those. Um, and I will be using Herzbrucker and for aroma hops, there were only five used. Haller Middlefru, Tet and Herzbrucker, <coughs> excuse me, followed by Mount Hood and Sterling. Um, I won't be using an aroma hop, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to kind of uh, split it up between the flavor and aroma hops. I'm going to do a 10 minute hop edition. Um, so 48% of the recipes used a flavor hop at an average of 0.15 ounces per gallon, all the way down to 0.8 to 0.25. So um, pretty big range there. Aroma hops are even bigger range. Um, only 30% of the recipes use an aroma hop at an average of 0.16. So right here is the sweet spot. Um, and that, that range between 0.05 and 0.44 ounces per gallon. So very heavily late hopped. I'm going to shoot the difference, like I said, and put in a 10-minute addition um, of 0.3, which is basically... 0.15 and 0.16, you know, you're going to get that amount. So I'm just going to double it up and put in a uh, Hersbrucker right there at 0.3. Uh, um, when I looked at all the late hops used, this was an interesting curve. Um, I see that recipes back in the late 90s, early 2000s, almost all the recipes used late hops. And then there was a period of time where people just didn't use late hops and were winning um, in competition. And then all of a sudden it ramps back up. Very interesting. So we see a parabolic curve here, um, instead of a, a linear profile. Um, and, and I'm going to follow this curve. I'm going to put in the late hops because that's where it's trending. And that's what the style guidelines say as well. So curious why these, you know, recipes did so well down here without, you know, any, any, any late hop additions. And then if you look at the total hop mass in ounces per gallon, you could try to linearize this. It has a low Pearson's correlation, but you're also, when you when you plot a parabolic curve, you get the same. So hoppy beers back in the 90s, lowly hopped for late, you know, this is uh, uh, flavor and aroma hop additions, and then gradually picking back up. You know, if you see, this is the rate that I'm using here, 0 0.3. So I'm following that trend back up, both the linear and the, a parabolic curve to, to make this a hoppier style. If we look at the mash types, 23% uh, decoction and 31% uh, step mash and 46% infusion, um, majority of which were some sort of stepped temperature mash. I'm not going to put a decoction, which is why I'm putting the melanoidin in. If you want to do a decoction, do not use the melanoidin. Uh, replace that with base malt. Um, but I am going to do a step mash with, um, um, you know, uh, toasted malts, uh, melanoidin malts um, to get that decoction type flavor. Um, when we look at the rests that were used for the various styles, first is an acid rest. We had a couple recipes using acid rest and the average was 95 Fahrenheit for um, or 35 Celsius for an average of about 40 minutes. Um, we had a few recipes, um, about, let's see, 40% of the recipes did a protein rest. Um, the average was 127. Pretty big range here between 120 and 135. Um, or 53 Celsius was the mean. And this was the average duration that the protein rest was held was 33 minutes. Um, we had about a quarter of the recipes use a beta rest at an average temperature of 145 Fahrenheit or 63 Celsius. 
for an average of 34 minutes. And then the main alpha rest, sacrification rest, the average temperature was 154 Fahrenheit or 68 Celsius for an average of 54 minutes. Uh, pretty big range as well for that uh, rest. I'll be doing a protein rest a little bit on the high side, right at 130. And then right at the mean, 154, I'll be doing the main sacrification rest. Re uh, no, maybe I missed it. Yeah, the, the, we are seeing some evolution on um, this uh, protein rest temperature gradually going up with time. I think I missed the slide. Just take my word for it. Um, we are seeing evolution of this the protein rest temperature going up. And that's why I picked 130 instead of 127. Uh, bowl duration, uh, anywhere between 60 and 120. The average was 74, and I'm going to do a 75-minute um, boil. Um, for the yeast used, the most prominent is uh, Weinspan 206, which is Oktoberfest strain. This is Y yeast 2206. 30% of the recipes use that. Uh, 3470 was the next most prominent, 24. Um, 833, 838, you know, these are the majority of the yeast used. Um, you can try some of these others, but this, this is where you have success. I'm actually picking 830 or 3470, and the reason is we're seeing a big shift. Um, good correlation numbers here. Um, you know, w one is perfect correlation. So anything between greater than a half or 0 0.5 is a good correlation showing 830 trending up and 820 trending down. So um, I'm going to brew this with uh, 830. 820 will work, um, but clearly a trend. Um, as well. And I, I thought maybe there was a trend with the hoppiness and the yeast used, and I tried to plot those against one another. But if you can remember, these early recipes were hoppy and these late recipes are hoppy. So absolutely no correlation between the yeast used and the hoppiness or late hop additions to this style. Water chemistry. Um, I won't, if you want, pause the slide here. I won't go through these, but I'll show you where I ended up. A little bit above 50 on calcium. Um, right at the 16 for both magnesium and sodium. Uh, I'm going to be on the high side, about 95 for sulfate and about 85. I think it's 85. Sorry, put 75. I think it's 85 for chloride. And the reason is we're we're seeing a, a shift up in time with both of those from a more Munich style, um, you know, very low um, salts in the water um, to more and more salts um, in, in the style. So again, trying to bring out that hop bitterness and that hop character later. Interesting though, well, a lot of those early recipes didn't report their water chemistry, um, but interesting that to see that as we shift that um, to a more hoppy style that we're seeing more chemicals or more uh, chloride and, and sulfate being added um, to, to really make those hops come out. So um, very, very interesting trend here um, with water chemistry. Um, fermentation temperatures, the average was 50 Fahrenheit or 10 Celsius um, for all of them. And didn't matter what strain you use, they all were right at 50 Fahrenheit. Um, I will ferment at 50. There was no change in time or evolution on that temperature. That that's, seems to be the, the average. Carbonation volumes, average was 2.4 volumes of CO2. And the mash pH average was 5.35. I'm going to stick right at those. All right, on to the recipe. Um, just recapping what I went over earlier. 51.7% um, uh, Weiermann Pilsner malt. 20.6% um, Munich 1 from Weiermann. 18.4% uh, Vienna malt from Weiermann. All, all the German malts. 6% Carapils. And 3.1% Melanoid. Just exactly what I showed you before. For the hopping, I'm going to start with about 22 IBUs of Magnum at 60 minutes. Um, and for Haller, I'm going to do 0 0.3 ounces per gallon of, of Haller Herzberger at, and put that in at 10 minutes. That's going to give me about 8 IBUs. And again, I'm going to use 2124 or uh, White Labs 830 or, you know, Fermentus 3470. You know, there's a bunch of th this, this strain of yeast is all over the place. I don't know the Omega, but you'll see it in the data. Uh, in the description of the video, the Omega strain. Um, most This is one of the most common uh, lager strains out there. I'm going to shoot for 1.070 and 30 IBUs. And for my water chemistry, I just went over that. Yes, it is 85, not 75. Apologize for that slide. 
of chlorides and 95 sulfate. Um, mash pH of 5.35. I'm going to step mash 130 Fahrenheit or 54 Celsius for 30 minutes. And I'm going to do a um, 154 sacrification rest or 68 Celsius for 60 minutes. I'm going to mash out sparge and boil. And I'm going to boil for 75 minutes, which is right at the average. Uh, chill to 48 Fahrenheit or 9 Celsius. Oxygenate and pitch um, 0.8 liters per gallon of, of wort uh, starter using the 3470 yeast. So if you're, using, if you're making a 5-gallon batch, that is a 1-gallon starter, 4-liter starter. I'm going to ferment at 50 Fahrenheit for 7 days, raise to 55, and hold for about 2 weeks as my diacetyl rest. Um, you know, play this by ear. If it's still f actively fermenting, if you've got a tilt in there, um, shoot to start raising right when you see the knee in the bend, when it st starts to flatten out uh, on the tilt, or you see less uh, bubble activity or, um, you know, whatever you use to gauge when you're getting close to the end. Um, slowly chill this to lagering temperatures, uh, rack to secondary and keg or keg and lager for seven weeks. The average was seven weeks that people lagered this style before they served it or entered it in competitions. Uh, transfer your bottle or keg and carbonate to 2.4 volumes. If, if you've lagered that long and you're bottling, you probably need to add some more yeast. Um, your yeast may be gone or dead or whatever. So um, consider if you're gonna bottle and not keg, um, add some bottling yeast. And that's it. Um, for my next few videos, I'm going to strictly pick styles that are suggested from each member on Patreon. Uh, so look up Mean Brews on Patreon if you want to propose uh, a style to cover. I will let every Patreon supporter pick the next few styles. I've got nine of them so far, so hopefully all nine will pick a style, so the next nine styles will be from there. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, just to let you know, the next video has already been picked, and it will be Black IPA or Cascadian IPA. So hopefully I've got some data on it. If you've got some recipes for black IPA, I've got one so far, uh, send it in. I've, I've got very scant uh, data on that style. So looking forward to doing this and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.